This is Torres McBride with uh, Torres Tech, and uh, welcome to the very first ever HVAC-a-thon HVAC Skills Challenge. This is Taylor. How you doing? Uh, Taylor's going to be one of our instructors. How old are you, Taylor? 24. How long have you been working in the industry? Uh, seven years. I got started right out of high school. So every week, we're going to do a different project. So Taylor, can you explain what we're doing this week? Sure. These don't come from the factory with service ports at all. They come just with hard pipe. So you really can't service these when uh, they go bad. You normally just junk them, but we want to make it a little bit better. We're going to put these two service ports. So the first step of that is to recover all the gas. And we're going to put a piercing valve on it. So that's just going to give us um, the potential to recover all the gas. Then we're going to recover the Freon. We're going to cut in um, a discharge port and we're going to drill this hole out for this suction port. And we are going to braze them in and then we're going to pressurize with nitrogen to leak check all the braze joints. And then we are going to blow that pressure off, pull vacuum, charge up, and start up. What are the skills you think that everybody is going to be able to practice in doing this project? Well, definitely brazing. Um, get your hands familiar with a manifold and a, where the hoses go and understanding a, a pressure gauge because you're going to be doing a lot of pressurizing, charging, pulling vacuum. You'll learn how to read the tag. You basically learn how to do a HVAC 101. How long did it take you to, not master, but really, really feel confident in your brazing skills? Brazing? Probably, uh, well, the apprenticeship is four years long. So I would say by the third third year. It's like three years. Yeah. So how often during that period did you practice not your, much. your skills? Not much. That's why something like this is really good because you get the opportunity to practice. If I was to uh, use the torch every day, I mean, it would have been a much quicker amount of time, but you don't always have that opportunity. You'll see a video that deals with like one thing, right? Like here's charging, or here's brazing, or here's recovery. But this is going to be an entire project from start to finish. A one on one. This might be in your way though for spinning, so maybe we'll take this off first. It's good to go all the way around so you don't have a, a burr when you when you take it off. What's that? A burr would be like an, it's an uneven cut because you cut when you go back and forth. You're not if you don't go all the way around the pipe. Make sure the pipe is on in, on those two rollers in between the yeah, two rollers. Two okay. Why are you cutting this? because we're gonna put a, a T in. Oh. Put this on a slight angle while you drill. Let the drill work. Yeah, let the drill do the work. Good man, good job. This, this baby goes inside. goes inside there. But first we're gonna take the pin out. You guys ever seen a, a, a straighter pin? You guys know how a straighter pin works? There's a rubber gasket, a very small rubber gasket right there. Mm -hmm. And it burns out. And, and yeah, that's why we can't um, torch with it. But when you depress this, air actually goes through those little cracks and then out from in there. Keep the fitting a little more. Yeah, yeah. Because you want the, the rod to actually suck to where the flame is going. Yeah, see, when you heat too low down, you see where the rod goes? It wants to go wherever the flame is. And when you use too much heat, it wants to run, too, right? That's why you use the flame around it. You know? That is? Don't be afraid to let it get get, get hot, but you're doing a good job. You had a little thing here. I'm cooling it down because there's a rubber ring in here. That can burn off. Yeah. We gotta open this. Taylor, how, how much would you, I mean, how would you do, 500 or what's a good What, what um, depends on what you're testing for. If you're testing um, refrigerant piping for our, uh, 410A, the highest that goes up to is like 450 on a really, really hot day. So I would test uh, 410A, 500 PSI. So right now we have 170 PSI inside of that little thing. 490, so there's 480, 500. I would use this little tiny tip. This one? Yeah. Take your you you got to, this is a little collar. You pull back, yeah. Uh, make sure you put that in good and, and pull on it before you do it because I've seen people screw that up. It's got to go in further. Now let that go and now pull on that thing. Because I've seen people that screw that up before and they just are holding a wand that has an uncontrollable flame. Yeah, but this is okay too. You guys have pins in there? Yeah. Okay, so now you know what? We'll do a little experiment. Yeah, we'll see if. If this gauge is correct. So we're gonna put the blue side, don't matter which side you do, but we're on the suction side, so we might as well follow the rules. So when I screw this on, you should see the red gauge come up. Yes. Yeah, so, and the blue gauge is up too, right? Okay, so now you can throttle. You have both these closed? Yeah. So now you can. Watch this. I'm gonna let it in the red side and it should come up on the blue side, right? Mm -hmm. 
See the blue side coming up too? It's going around the whole cycle. Understand? Mm -hmm. So we'll bring it up to 300, like I said. <coughs> Let that catch up, that side. You guys did good, no leaks. All right, now spray, spray. You guys have used this? You probably used this. Yeah, spray spray probably. Yeah. Always check these too. Even check the factory stuff if you're in the same area. Oh, okay. You check the factory stuff because if you heat this up, sometimes you could melt this. You know, especially if you're doing salt sauce. Nitrogen don't hurt the oil. So, just blow it off. If you let it rip, it'll be loud, but it's a really small That's going to be blown off of my stun. Yeah. So, you guys can have your own. Yeah, we're going to change the oil on the vacuum pumps too, so you guys can do exactly what you would do in the field. Okay, so now turn that baby on. Oh, there you go. Okay. So uh, we got to bring that down to 500 microns. And then once it reaches 500 microns, shut these. Open them. And then shut the vacuum, and then make sure it holds 500 microns. Put your thumb right there. Put, put, put your thumb on it, cover that hole. Now let go. Yeah. So this thing is sucking all the um, non-condensables, brings it down to a negative pressure. So when you charge refrigerant, when you put refrigerant back in the system, it's got nothing but Freon in it. See this, see this hose? We have to bleed this till we get a full column of liquid. So there used to be air in this line. We are, like I said before, we want, we want only refrigerant. Now we're going to watch this go up to 10.8. So let me know when I'm, when I'm approaching 10.8, please. Give it a little more. So we're going to put the Freon caps back on, and then you guys can panel this back up, and then we're going to run it. And that's it. She's done. Right now we're actually running with a little bit low back pressure because we want it at 40 degrees because what can actually happen when you have low back pressure like that it could freeze it can ice up so what did we do before you know we don't want to add air so what do we got to do right there we got to we got to bleed purge the yellow one right so i'm gonna charge very slowly liquid into the suction side see it came up a little it's at 35 ish now i'm gonna bring that right to 40. this is a um, there's a lot of variables when it comes to charging. Charging is, is, a, is an art form, honestly, because when you're charging, the ambient temperature totally affects everything. So if, if you're in a room that the space temperature is 95 degrees and you're trying to charge refrigerant, you have to take that into consideration because that brings your back pressure temperature up. Oh, yeah, that's, that's running. We, oh, then, all right, then guess what, guys? Everybody has uh, to pass the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> 